well hi <laughs> i don't even know how to start this video and i don't even know how my intro would be in english hi i appear hi i'm manifesting myself in your screens i don't know well um hi i'm from argentina and i am a booktuber and i speak about books about astrology about um witchcraft and all the things i love in this channel but in spanish so this video was a challenge that one of my subscribers told me a long long time ago and well i think this is going to be the cringiest video in the history of all my channel so of course i i did not want to upload this upload this and i don't know if i'm going to do it so yeah the purpose of this video is me an argentinian is speaking about argentinian literature but not the type of argentinian literature that you have heard or the type of literature or authors that are most known such as borges for example um i'm going to talk about argentinian authors that maybe are not even translated into english so yeah um here in argentina it's raining so i'm so sorry for the lightning and the noises that might be outside and here it's my cut in case you hear him um so well i am so so sorry for um, my pronunciation and mistakes that I might make along the way that of course I know I'm going to make. Um, it's been a long long time since I didn't have a normal conversation in English. I use English all the time, I read in English constantly, I read classics, but when it comes to conversation or oral speaking, you may notice that it is not so easy for me because it's been years since I don't have a normal conversation with someone in English. So of course it's a kind of thing I'm not used to anymore and of course I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. So here I am with my friend's Google Translator as I am speaking and I have a lot of books to show you or to talk about and now here's a message for my Spanish subscribers. Eh, bueno. Este es un video que se los debía hace muchísimo tiempo, me da un cringe absoluto. Espero que YouTube esté mostrando los subtítulos, los subtítulos automáticos y si no es así voy a tratar de o sea, poder yo misma poner los subtítulos, eh, tipo escribirlos a mano, pero no sé cómo funciona, así que lo voy a intentar para que ustedes también puedan escucharlo. Igualmente voy a eh, andar por los mismos temas que toco siempre en todos mis videos, Simplemente acá va a estar más compactado para cumplir el challenge, así que bueno, nada, vamos a seguir con el video. So, for the native English speakers, if you want to say something to me, like a piece of advice, or maybe like saying here you said this wrong, or whatever, like there is no problem, you can give me all the feedback about my English, my pronunciation, or whatever, all you want, you can put it in the comments and I don't have any problem with that because I know that my weak spot in English of course is oral speaking because it's been so so long since I do not speak it like regularly so yeah I'm going to be starting with the um, books we are going to talk about today um, I have a, a stack like this um so yeah and i know you're going to uh know some of the others i'm going to talk about today but not all of them some of them can be surprises or hidden gems um and i want to use this video maybe to spread a little bit argentinian um literature but maybe from the side that is not as known as other authors so here I have a little, little controversial book. Um, I've seen this book all around TikTok, BookTok, YouTube, BookTube, whatever. Um, and it's kind of strange the phenomena of seeing an Argentine author being like spread that way. Um, here in my hands I am holding the book that in English is called Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Basterrica and in Espanol is Cadaver Exquisito, but in English it is known as Tender is the Flesh. I know this is a book that has a lot of controversy around it um, because 
it's you know it's harsh in a kind of way um, there are a lot of topics here such as cannibalism that are kind of you know you have to have a, a strong stomach to be able to read this book but as an Argentinian it is a dystopian book that I've enjoyed so so much and I can say that it's the best dystopian book I have read so far um, and I know it's a really controversial book and I know that also this has been like um, like a veganism how to say this? wait, I, I, I'm going to translate it because I don't know how to say this This is not the world I'm looking for. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that, like, vegans, I am vegan, have taken this book, have taken this book, like, showing the reality of things. And in a kind of way, they have taken over, like, this book. Like, okay, this book represents this idea. And as a vegan myself, I can notice like how strong the message of this book is even though it's dystopian and it is like like you have to have a strong stomach to be able to read this because it's is a very gore story um it is basically uh you know future where humans cannot eat animal meat anymore or vegetables and they have to start eating human meat and they show you the way that humans are like now the the new that they're breeding humans you know basically and how that works how the industry works that now is the same for animals but here it's like so shocking to when the book shows you the same reality that animals live but with humans with human race and so that's why the book is like so shocking in a kind of way and i think that it's also why some people hated this book so much and I know that you have to be really really strong to keep reading because it, it makes your stomach like feel weird um, as a vegan myself I really like this book to make other people understand how I see the reality of the animals that now are being slaughtered and in this book humans are being slaughtered and how this situation is normalized as if, if, not, if nothing happened. Like how normal is to go to a supermarket and maybe take to your home a piece of hand or a feet or feet, you know, like, and, and then you start noticing like these social patterns where people normalize things that are absolutely like absolute horror, basically. Um, it is being so hard to explain myself, like, my gosh. My mind is like... <sighs> well, in case you have read this, um, Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Basterrica, there's another book from her that I really, really enjoyed and it has been recently released, so it is not yet translated, but taking into account the fact that this book um, had a lot of controversy and it was like really really sold um, I'm going to recommend to you also by Agustina Basterrica Las Indignas I have no idea how this is going to be translated because sometimes like title translations are not literal but um, this book was really really dark continuing with that kind of dark vibe um, but here we have also like religious trauma vibe um, and cults so it is amazing it is so catching it is so interesting um, all of her all of her plots have this kind of catching thing but it's so at the same time it's so like dark but I really really loved this book so of course I'm going to recommend it to you I've also read other things by her I read all of her books but these two are my best um, my best options for recommending are my favorites 
Um, and now we're going to change the topic like 180, 180 degrees. Um, and I'm going to be talking about Pisarnik. She's the love of my life. Pisarnik was a writer and she was um, a poet. And here in my hands, I am holding her diaries, like all of these gigantic thing are her diaries. Um, in case you may have read Sylvia Plath or Anais Nin, I think you will find Pisarnik such as hypnotic as the writing of those other women that I have mentioned just recently. Um, Pisarnik is so profound with the way she feels, she's so emotional, all of the emotions that she goes through, it's like you can relate so much to her words. And I'm not sure if there is really like copies of Pisarnik literature that are translated into English, but I've been seeing uh, little pieces of her poetry or parts of her diary being translated into English. So if you want to check her, I promise you that it won't disappoint you in case you like, um, for example, Sylvia Plath or Anais Nin writings. Um, I'm a huge fan of Anais Nin and I really, really love her. And I also feel very related to Pisarnik writing. And it's for the girlies, you know, like Pisarnik is for the girlies. <laughs> and talking about poets and poetry, of course, I cannot forget to mention Alfonsina Storni, which had a same final in her life, such as Virginia Woolf, and she was also an Argentinian poet. I have this little book, um, and she was so great, and I think that it is a great opportunity to read a little bit of Argentinian poetry too. Other book of an Argentinian female author that I might want to recommend is La Sed by Marina Shuksuk that I know that this book is translated in English and it's called Thirst. Um, this is basically a book about vampires, but I think that it is like, you know, make the vampires genre great again. Well, this is what this book has done <laughs> with vampire stories. I am not a huge fan of vampire stories, to be honest, but this book, it was honestly amazing like there are two stories here that then are like intertwined and it's fascinating like honestly with those two words that I have to say about this book like you have to give this book a chance because it's amazing honestly um and I think it kind of gives like another perspective on vampire stories and I think that it is so so good that it is honestly such a great book and then I'm going to be talking about a uh, part of Argentinian literature that is like underground Argentinian literature and not so known and I don't want to miss the opportunity of this video that it might, you know, like have another type of viewers, not my usual viewers, um, because I want to talk about Alberto Laiseca, which is my favorite Argentinian writer, along with Pisarnik. Um, and well, I took this book that is La Mujer en la Muralla, um, in English, I think it would be the woman in the Great Wall, in reference to the Great Wall of China. Um, Alberto Laiseca is, well, was an Argentinian writer uh, that he did not have, did not have a lot of, you know, um, he was not that known, basically. And one of the things he wanted was to be translated and it's something that he was never able like in life um and of course i want to take this moment to talk a little bit about him because he's one of my favorite argentinian authors and for me it's so so sad that he has not been translated yet um luckily there are some new books from him that now are being like released um after his death but he has not yet been translated i think it's such 
a sad thing for me because he is a great writer and he has the largest Argentinian novel like in the history of Argentinian literature he has the largest novel which is Los Sorias um, I don't know how to say this number I have a really big problem with numbers in English I, I will leave it here like how many pages this book has not this one but Los Sorias which is the largest but I think that Alberto Leiseca is like uh, such a unique author. You will not find uh, another author like him. I want to translate this because I don't really know how to say it. Like in English, here is the word. Um, he kind of created a new genre that he named it delusional realism, or it would be something like that. In Spanish is Realismo Delirante and he writes a kind of way that I have never seen um, an author that has that way of writing. In case you are listening to this and you know the author Brandon Sanderson that I also really love, well here in Argentina we have kind of like an Argentinian Brandon Sanderson Laiseca. Laiseca is kind of the Argentinian Brandon Sanderson. In case you know like the Cosmere and the whole concept of the Cosmere, well, Laiseca in his writings has kind of this thing of like, again, this word that I don't know how to say. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, it was like literal. <laughs> Laiseca has this thing of intertextuality constantly in all his works, like in all of them, such as the Cosmere of Randall Sanderson. He has like characters that are in a book and they're also appearing in another book, situations that like have something in common with the books, like a situation that happened in a book and then it appears in the other book, one character that appears in one book and then it appears in the other. Um, so it is like the Argentinian Cosmere and for me it's such 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 a sad thing that Laiseca was not translated and I know that it's also a huge risk because who is going to translate a book that has like so so many pages not this one but I'm talking about Los Sorias um, so yeah I wanted to uh, take this little time to talk about Laiseca because I love him so much I'm so sorry this video is it has such a chaotic style, but I, I did not make a, um, a script for this. I'm just like talking. <laughs> well, um, if we're going to talk about Laiseca, of course, we have to talk about Marcelo Fox, which is, well, he was one of Laiseca's friends. Um, they, they studied magic together because Laiseca studied occultism, which is one of the reasons why I like him so much and he also loved astrology and I am an astrologer yeah I studied the career of astrology for years astrology um well this is of course something that is not going to be translated and like this is not even like a copy from uh like a normal copy it's like how to say this independently published um, so it is so hard to like get to the level of this book being translated but it's short so maybe an independent translator could do it um, but well this book in English is basic, basically called Invitation to the Slother or something like that um, Marcelo Fox is like one of the most underground Argentinian authors um, there's also such a mysterious thing around his death. He was decapitated by a train here in Buenos Aires. Um, so there's such a mythical thing going around with Laiseca, Marcelo Fox and other authors of that time. So that's why it has such a mysterious magic like in all these books um, that I'm talking to. And well, also, I want to talk about two specific books. Um, let me look up for this word. 
Okay, this is one of Laiseka's disciples, which is Ariel Lupino. I know he's been translated in other languages because I've seen one of his books in Italian, but not in English. Well, um, good book to look up. Um, and then another author that he is an author that he writes about Laiseka, but he also writes his own novels. And this is Nigredo by Agustin Conde de Boeck. And I think this is so great. Like if you like Kafka, if you like, um, like, I don't know how to pronounce this name. If you like Cthulhu stories and all of that, you know, like Lovecraft, you will love Nigredo and you will love the writing style of Agustin Conde de Boeck. Sadly, it is not translated, so I'm kind of selling to you something you cannot read. <laughs> but I hope that this would be translated and some, in some time, at some time, in some time. Well, my mind is like, oof. But yeah, well, I'm going to end this video with this book. Um, It is really, really dark and it has kind of this dark academia stuff that it's going on here like on booktube but darker than that um and it has magic occultism all of the stuff that i like in books um so yeah this was so cringe and i think this is the worst video of the history of all my channel i do not even know if i'm going to upload this because when i'm going to be editing this i'm going to be like how can you speak so badly you stupid but well, in case I'm uploading this, which is like kind of rare, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, in case you liked these recommendations or the vibe of my channel, I'm so sorry to announce that all of my videos are in Spanish. But in case that some of my subscribers liked this format, I could try to make other videos in English, but I don't think anyone would like that. <laughs> to be honest um, and at this point I'm really doubting that I am going to upload this but well in case I do thank you so much for watching and I see you in another videos and in case you want to join my channel um, and be subscribed you must know that if you put the automatic translation um, at least you can understand like an 80% of what I'm saying in my Spanish videos if you're an English speaker um, of course there is Argentinian slang that the automatic translation will not will not pick up uh, because here in Argentina we have such a peculiar way of speaking in Spanish um but well thank you so much for watching and i will be seeing you in another video talking about uh books and other things thank you so much <laughs>